forests are truly the rainforests of the ocean. An estimated nine million species from microbes to manta rays and thousands of types of fish. They're all there because of the corals. 500 million people around the world also depend on coral reefs for food, creating land, and protecting coastlines. Corals may even contain new medicines to cure age-old diseases. The problem now is that Earth's climate is changing very fast. The oceans are warming much faster than ever before. So the big question is whether the corals can adapt. Across the tropics, ocean warming is driving the loss of coral reefs at an unprecedented rate, jeopardizing land, food, and lives. Some reefs, however, are defying the odds. There's corals that are, are living, are still alive here. We are finding some reefs that are not dying that appear to be figuring out how to cope with this warming. But coral reefs are spread across a huge area of tropical ocean. So how do we know which of those reefs are resilient? What we're learning is that the corals themselves contain important clues. One important clue to how a reef will respond to future warming is how it has responded to past heat waves. What we do is we go out and we take a biopsy of the reef and we come home with a skeletal core. And to look inside the core, we CAT scan them. What we're looking for are these bright white bands called stress bands. These bands form when the reef is bleaching. Coral polyps get most of their energy and color from tiny plant-like algae that live inside them. When the water gets too warm, corals expel the algae exposing their white skeletons. Bleached corals are essentially starving to death. But some coral reefs are more heat tolerant than others. We found some reefs with absolutely no stress bands. These reefs should have bleached, but they haven't. In other cases, we found reefs that have bleached repeatedly over time, but they seem capable of recovering quickly. We believe that these corals are adapting these coral reefs are what we call the super reefs, and they must be protected because they have the best chance of surviving. Every super reef should be in a marine protected area. No fishing, no dynamiting, no uh, dredging, uh, etc. all the things that uh, destroy coral reefs. What's being done in Palau and uh, Phoenix Islands is a good model going forward for other places that we identify as hosting super reefs. By protecting super reefs, what we're doing is we're protecting the climate resilient corals. And those corals are gonna reproduce and their larvae are gonna travel on the ocean currents to far flung neighboring reefs that have been devastated by climate change. And those larvae are gonna grow into small corals, so they're gonna grow into bigger colonies and over time, that reef is gonna come back and it could come back more temperature tolerant than it was before. Many coral reef countries want to protect their super reefs, but we don't necessarily know where all the super reefs are. So the first step is to go out there and find them and then work with the governments of coral reef nations to incorporate those climate resilient reefs into marine protected areas. All our decisions have to be based on good science and the survival of coral in the future is under great threat. Now is the time to act, to ensure that coral reefs have a future.